Hello guys and welcome back to another Tweaker Man video. So in this video I'm going to show you how to make probably the best analog interconnects in the world. Now it's a bit tongue-in-cheek in a sense but I do believe that these are that good that I'd find it hard push to find anything that would be better than this. Now this is using top quality products and I've already got another set running in on my system at the moment and this is the second set that I've made and I can assure you they are sounding really good. Now I had a set of pure silver Russ Andrews select interconnects which I purchased, well my uncle purchased I should say and I inherited and I listened to those and I wasn't that impressed with them. So they went on to eBay and paid for other upgrades on this system. But these would whip the arse off of those. These are that good. Now what we need for this, to do this job, is we need our core material. Okay, so that is 0.5 four mil silver wire four nines and you could say you could say what about oh no continuous cast silver well that would be slightly better but when you get to this level of fidelity things are very subtle very subtle and uh, you'd have to have a highly expensive system i'm talking about hundreds of thousands to notice a lot of difference so um so we need the wire we also need the cotton tubing now someone else also said to me you could use shoelaces well that would be fine if they were made of pure cotton and uh, if they're not if they're a synthetic shoelace no i wouldn't use them now the beauty of this stuff is it comes in a continuous length so you can make it as long as you like with a shoelace you'd have to join it if you wanted to make something like a three meter length uh, a shoelace is not that long so that is why i would say use this and this is very cheap as well it's not as if it's expensive you'd probably pay more for a set of shoelaces than you would buy this stuff now what i'll do is i'll put a list to all the products in the description below at the end of this video so you can see um, where to purchase all this. So also we need some electrical cleaner <clears throat> and we need some PTFE tape and some nylon braid. Now I've used a different nylon braid on these ones and I've just run out of it. So I'm going to show you using some black nylon braid. And, um, and what I've already done is I've already twisted two conductors together to speed this video up so the reason i'm doing this is because this is so much quicker to produce a video making it in a small length on camera than it is a long length so you'll be able to see how it's made but i've already made the cables there as you can see and then you need a very high quality set of uh, phono plugs rca plugs and these are the wbt now don't use if you're building this cable, don't use brass plugs that are gold plated because brass acts as a bottleneck. And um, and these are made of a copper alloy, which is far better than brass. So to take this cable to an even next level, you could use pure silver. Now, they would be undoubtedly better than these plugs, but I've got a set of these plugs here and uh these ain't copies, these are original WBT, and these are great plugs, so I'm going to show you uh, how to fit those at the end of the video onto these cables here. So let's get the, uh, the camera on the tripod, and I'll get showing you how to build this. So you also need a drill, and you'll need some heat shrink as well. Now what I've effectively done here is I've just cut two lengths of 0.4, and I've bunched them together, the two, and then I've twisted them in the drill. So you get a really nice twist there. And <clears throat> this, is, this is done because we want a, 
eight mil conductor. But two of these together, I found sounded slightly better than a 0.8 on its own. So uh, that's what I've opted for. So let's start showing you how to build this now. So if you don't know how to twist wires together in a drill, here's a, 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 a what do you call it? An example on how to do it. You just fix it to the chuck. Now you need a, a drill with a small chuck. Okay, there we go. And then you just twist it round like that and you get a perfectly nice twist there. Okay, that's one done there. And then we just put the other one into the chuck there. You have to make sure the chuck's nice and small there. There go, tighten that up nicely. And again, hold it here, like so. There we go. Get a nice twist there. So we've got two nice twists going on there. And you run your twist these, you really need to count in seconds um, to make sure you get the twists the same. Because otherwise what you'll be doing is making lengths, different lengths. So now what we need to do is we need to now cut some of this, this cotton tubing to about there. And I've got my uh, wire snippers here, which are really sharp, and they, they, they should just cut straight through this. There we go. So that's one piece there. And then we need another piece, the same length again. I mean, this is so easy to build these as well. It's a very simple process. So now we've got that to there. <clears throat> Enable to get the... Um, the wire through the cotton tubing is to put a piece of PTFE tape over the end of it because what will happen is it will snag up in there and uh, and it's rubbish once it snags up it just gets caught up inside the tube and, and you have to keep pulling it back so just put a piece of PTFE tape make it sort of bulbous on the end we're going to pull it off afterwards Okay, so that's one there. So then we want to just thread it through. There we go, open it up first. There we go. So that's one on there. Now we'll just remove that from the end of there. There we go, that's one. <clears throat> And we'll do the same to this one. Just snip that off there again. that threaded through there but the PTFE tape all it does is it just stops it from snagging up inside because you know what wires like it will just snag up so now we just pull that off after again right okay so now being able to I mean, the problem with, with cotton is uh, you don't want to push two conductors together, really. You, you need some PTFE tape in between them, um, just so no conductors touch, because that, be, uh, that would be not very good. And uh, you could sort of short out your, your amplifier by that happening. So now we take our PTFE tape here, and we just twist it in our fingers there. You're only giving it one coat of it, one layer, I should say, not a coat. If you, you could make these small ones for jumpers between your, if you have an integrated amplifier and you have some of these, um, these uh, little metal 
like prongs that fit between two RCA plugs. Okay, you could use these as a uh, as a jumper. These small ones. Just chop that out there. Okay, now that this just sticks over a bit at the end, we'll just cut that off with a pair of scissors later. Now we need to do the same to this one as well now. <clears throat> GFE tape can sometimes get a bit messy when you're using it. Right, the same process again here. Just push that up there like that. Right, remembering when you do this, you don't want the PTFE tape to touch the conductor at all. It's only got to touch the cotton. Because the reason being is cotton is the best insulator because it's only 0.6 in the dielectric constant and that is how much the insulator is touching the conductor and PTFE is a two is two so it's a lot higher which isn't as good as pure cotton now the reason why a lot of manufacturers don't make it out of cotton is because it's a lot more hard work for them so they tend to use they tend to that their machines can't cope with cotton, I don't think, very easy. It's a lot more difficult to produce a cable out of cotton. So that's why you'll find only handmade ones are made from cotton. Um, don't hold me to that, of course, because I'll end up getting pelters. But if you look on most of the high-end cables, they tend to be made of uh, Teflon, which is PTFE. Right, OK, so we've got... Our two conductors done like that now. Now we just want to cut back this this bit of cotton there. Remembering not to cut your conductor while you're doing it. Because uh, that would be silly now, wouldn't it? There we go. We'll just cut that round like that. Right, brilliant. So now we've got our two conductors there. And now... What we want to do is to stick this back in the drill again. So enable not to ruin the two conductors here. Or I should say the four conductors because there's two on each. Um, we want to put some more PTFE tape around there. Now when you do cable building... PTFE tape is invaluable. I mean, it's the best product to hold everything in place. You don't want to be using sticky tape and that, like a, like black insulation tape or anything, because it's got an adhesive on it, and it'll just land up going bad over a long period of time. So now we've got our two conductors there. Okay. We're going to stick it in the drill again now. Right, okay, and then we're going to hold the two conductors together, and then we're just going to twist them together like that, okay. Now, one thing I failed to say at the beginning, because this is a sample, okay, is make sure that you mark what is going to be your centre conductor, your signal, and what is going to be your ground, okay, because... Um, you don't want to be uh, mixing them up, boys. You're going to have to mess about using a multimeter at the end to um, to uh, find out what conductor's what. So here we have our conductor twisted together in a lovely twist there. So we have effectively twisted two conductors together, and then them two conductors have been then twisted again with with uh, with another two conductors so we've got our center which is our signal and then we've got our ground wire so now what we need to do is to hold these in place is by twisting now some ptfe tape around this okay two layers
come up to the end and then come back on yourself a little bit then chop it there and now you've got a really nice like <coughs> twist here okay bearing in mind you've got to make sure you mark one of these so at the beginning mark it with a black marker so when you get down to the end you'll know exactly what's going on now what we need to do now is just to put our braid over it now so uh, we're going to cut our braid now okay just offer it up to the cable there just chop it this is only a very small amount you see so this the reason i do this video like this is because a lot of people won't watch the video to the end and this will speed up the video so we'll just chop a bit more off of that so then we can get some heat shrink over it afterwards <coughs> And now what we want to do is just push our cable through there. Now what you're best to do before you do that is you're best to melt the ends of this with a soldering iron. And that's what I'll do now. So now we're just going to uh, put the braid on the back of here just to stop it from, from fraying too much when we come to doing the uh, threadling it through. Right, okay, that's that. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to push these two conductors together. Now this may snag up if you do it like this because it's going through a nylon braid again. Gradually just work your way through it. There we go, straight out the other side there. Okay, so we've got that over there. Bearing in mind, this is just a sample, as I, as I say. This is the cable has already been made. So this is just to show you how it's done. And because I like doing it like this, because it's very simple. Now, before we do anything else, what we're going to do is we're just going to tin the ends of these, these conductors here with some, uh, with some silver solder. Now you don't want to use when you're doing this you need to use silver solder because we're talking about the best of the best and we really want to make sure that people are using all the correct products it just helps this for when we put it onto the uh onto the plug now the wdp wbt plugs i have are ones that screw together but what i'm going to be doing is they screw they've got a little screw on them to screw down the conductor but i'm going to screw it down and i'm going to solder it as well okay there we go now the problem with cotton is it can go a bit messy on the ends but it doesn't matter so we've got that there now what we need is just some heat shrink Need a bit of heat shrink to go on each end. Uh, we use this red one, so the red indicates the right channel, and the and the black would indicate the left channel. Um, I'm only going to show you how to make one of these, and then you just replicate it. So now, what we need to do now is to plug our heat gun in. Okay, switch this off. Now, I'm making these in the A room, room today. I'm not out in the uh, studio out there because I've got a lot of work on out there. So now we need another piece of uh, PTFE tape. That one's run out now. So I buy PTFE tape in a big load of rolls like this from Tool Station in here in the UK. So if you're watching this from another country, then you'd uh, obviously have to look at how you get it from somewhere else. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to slip this over here. Okay, like so, push that up to there. And enable to stop this from, um, in fact, what I've done is I've cut these too big, really, for this size cable. So if we just chop that in half, there we go, about there. Enable to, uh, to not singe the nylon braid with the heat gun is all I do now. 
is I used to try to tickle it in and I've got it pretty good each time but now it's easier just to wrap a bit of PTFE tape around here and then we'll take it off afterwards. All it does is just stops it from melting the braid because it's heat resistant. There we go, we'll just chop that off of there. If I bring that down to there a bit and then we'll just heat it up here. Go. Then we just remove the the PTFE tape there, and we'll do the same to this end. Okay, what I find is when I make these sort of cables and that, when I do them off camera, I get them a lot neater than when I do them on camera. It's just just one of those things, really. So what I'll be, that's why I've made it off camera as well. But this one is just, as I say, a sample. Right, so now all we need to do again, this stuff starts to get messy again. Just chop that off and start again. i just put another piece around here. Right, so we'll just push that into place there and heat this up again. So there we have a Diddy version of these. You see, same thickness. So now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to terminate these now. So what we need to do now is just to solder the ends of these uh, like I showed you on the other one. Just get a bit of solder on there just to... Um, To keep the two conductors together. Right, that's the same. Now I'll do the same with this end here. That went down there. I also think that manufacturers don't use cotton because it's a bit messy as well and it's a bit more difficult to work with. So We've got it like that now, so now we need to feed this through um, to, uh, so if you can see here, these have got screws on these ones, and they're quite handy. If you're not very good at soldering, then they're good for, uh, for doing this. So what we need to do is to fire that through the end here, if we can get it through. So we need our black to go into there. You won't be able to see this very well on here. It's a bit more difficult. Um, so I've screwed the, I've put that into the hole there. I've screwed that tight down. Now with this one, I'm not going to screw it in. I'm just going to solder it to the top of the earth there. Which I much prefer to do really than to than to screw them down. Like I said, I was going to solder it anyway. So I'll just get that onto there like that. And now we need our solder wherever it's gone down here. Let's get our thing. That's not on there yet. A bit more. Hold it on a bit for a while because this can be quite.
There we go. So there we go, that's that one. Now, we should have a little screw somewhere around here. Somewhere. I don't know where that's gone now. Never mind, I shall find that in a minute. So there we have one fitted on, one plug. Now don't worry about if it looks a bit messy in there because the cotton goes like that. It goes a bit messy and um, there's not a great deal you can do about it. It's very hard to keep it clean. So then we get our plug that just goes on the end here now. Okay, now in the end here, okay, we're going to fill it with silicon around there because these wires are a lot smaller. So, and some of these plugs, for some reason, haven't got the little screws with them. They've gone awry somewhere. So, um, so that's that. So let's take turn our attention now to this end. And we need to do the same again here. Um, what we're going to do is to uh, solder up this end here now. Uh, solder again. Keeps falling down. Let's just turn that over that way. And I've got a nice bit of solder on that one. This one I'm going to shorten very slightly. Um, push that down and then put some solder on that as well. So we need another one of the white ones here, which is the black. I want to get our solder, our um, Allen key there to undo it. We'll keep that one tightened up because we're just going to solder it onto there. Okay, so we want to get this through here. So we've got that in place now. So all we want to do now is just to solder this in again. I can find the solder again. Get another bit off of it. Oh, here it is down there. Let's just solder that in there. You don't have to screw these in. You can just do solder joints on them good as to get both in really like that but right that should do it on there very nicely now I'm just going to solder down the back there again of this one as I say I like to do both there um, let's get some more of this off of here Right. That's it, that's done it. Right. So here we have it all soldered in. It looks a bit fluffy there because it's it, this that's the thing with cotton. It tends to go a bit fluffy, but um 
I can assure you it's perfectly fine. So that's our other done. So I've got those two done now. So what I'll do is I'll do the other ones. I'll come back in a second. So here we have the build finally finished. Ah, these are going to be great again. So what I'm going to do with this set is I'm going to send these off to be deep cryogenically treated at Frozen Solid. So if you don't know Frozen Solid, look them up on the internet. They do cryogenic treatment of all sorts of stuff, audio cables. They also do um, Formula One parts. And because you know what, um, deep cryogenic treatment is a fabulous thing to do. And it really improves the quality of your cables. So I think that's it for this video. I hope you like the format. It was to speed the video up because it would have took too long otherwise. So thanks for watching another Tweaker Man video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a like. Don't forget to press that notification bell so you're notified each time I upload a new video. And thank you for watching, guys.